I want to thank everybody for joining me today. Um, my name is Josh Franks, Senior Applications Engineer here at Jim Myers & Sons. Today we're going to focus on six of the most common flocculator technologies used in municipal water plants. There are three vertical types. We have the paddle wheel, vertical impeller, and the vertical hyperbolic. The other three are the horizontal flocculator, paddle wheel flocculator, the walk and beam paddle wheel flocculator, and hydraulic baffle wall flocculator. We'll begin with velocity gradient, which is a measure of mixing intensity. General equation for velocity gradient, or G value, is a function of power input per unit volume at a given temperature. You can see in that equation there. So the gradient is dependent on input, temperature of the water, and volume of the water you're mixing. The formula expands a little bit when we're dealing with mechanical mixers over here on the right side. And the power input is made up of the coefficient of drag area of your paddle or mixing blade and the relative velocity between that blade and the water. Uh, as you can see, uh, the paddle blade area and speed over here are the easiest variables to adjust. So that's typically how we achieve a tapered velocity between stages in a flocculation basin, varying the, the area and speed of the paddles. Uh, the 10 states standards or guidelines created by a group of states and Canadian provinces around the Great Lakes and JMS paddle wheel flocculators are fully compliant to these standards. Three main points of those standards are that a detention time should be between 20 and 30 minutes. Maximum tip speed should be 3 feet per second or less. And the flow through velocity of the basin should be 0 0.5 to 1.5 feet per minute. No velocity gradient guidelines are given by the 10 state standards, but for water treatment plants, a velocity gradient between 70 to 15 is acceptable and provides the best results. And typically, also the temperature is not given by the 10 state standards, but typically designed for anywhere between 35 to 45 degrees Fahrenheit. So as you can see in this picture to the right over here, um, there's a large, fluffy, easily settable flocculator particle is the goal of any flocculator. This takes pressure off of the downstream equipment to perform. This picture was taken in a flocculator basin using horizontal paddle wheel flocculators. Some factors that could affect this gradient selection over here are um, the type of subsequent downstream equipment, uh, the, wall, the raw water influent into you, and then there's also local conditions and chemicals that are added during flocculation that could affect your selection of gradients over here. Some considerations when selecting between flocculator technologies are usually uh, basin flow. Some technologies are not cost effective for large flows, for example. Uh, the basin dimensions. Flocculators must be arranged to eliminate dead zones and prevent short circuiting. Uh, for new or existing basins, they may or may not be able to support vertical type mixers. Uh, you may have to add steel or concrete bridges, as you can see here. Uh, the budget, certain technologies have a better flocculation per volume of water ratio than others. And another thing to account for are redundancy requirements. Some technologies allow one basin to be operated by one drive while other technologies may have numerous drives per flock basin. And of course the baffled wall type flocculators have no drives at all. So the hydraulic baffled wall flocculators, also known as baffled channel flocculators or Alabama flocculators, consist of numerous walls at a specific spacing to create the appropriate velocity gradient. The only way to adjust velocity gradient is by adjusting the flow. Can be, these walls can be made of concrete, wood, fiberglass, or stainless steel. You can do a serpentine flow or over-under flow. So the advantages of that type of flocculator are that there's very little maintenance required, no moving mechanical parts are required, minimal wear items, and no electricity costs. Disadvantages, 
or that it's difficult to finally adjust the mixing intensity, since all you control, can control is the flow. Uh, there's significant head loss created. The flock particle created is not as good as other technologies. So you might choose the hydraulic baffled wall flocculators when initial costs must be as low as possible and the energy usage must be as low as possible. Hyperbolic flocculators have a distinct design at the bottom, the shaft into a gearbox, and the uh, gearbox accommodates all axial and radial forces that might be experienced. These flocculators uh, create a specific type of turbulence in the basin. The manufacturers take credit for the drag coefficient that they have on these and the relative velocity of all the turbulence that's created to uh, create their flocculation. Some advantages here are that all mechanical parts are above the water line. There's minimal wear items, easy access for maintenance. Uh, you get optimum process control because each drive speed can be adjusted. Like I said, with the drag coefficient and relative velocity, there's some claims that you use some less energy to power these. Uh, disadvantages are that the high tip speed shears some of the flock particles and that they typically violate 10 state standards and go to 6 to 9 feet per second on the tip. Uh, there's limited installations in water plants for these. Uh, some patents prevent competition and there's a high initial cost compared to some other vertical type mixers. One motor operates one impeller, which can add to the cost compared to other technologies that have one motor operating many reels. You might choose this if initial cost is not concern or uh, reduced energy usage is worth the lower quality flock that's produced, but all, and all mechanical components are above the water level. Moving on to the impeller flocculator. Again, the shaft is directly inserted into the gearbox, so all thrust and radial forces are experienced by that gearbox. Tip speed typically violates 10 states standards of three feet per second. They're usually in the six to nine feet per second range. So this means that uh, flock particles are sheared at the blades and they rely on the pumping action of the water to the flocculation. And the output is generally a low quality pin flock. You can see a CFD analysis here showing high shear areas at the impeller versus the paddle wheel, for example. Some um, advantages to these are that all mechanical parts are above the water, minimal wear items, easy access for maintenance, and you can control the speed of each unit. Disadvantages are that High shear zones violate the 10 state standards in that area. Flock is not as high quality with these, and it relies on the pumping action of the blades and the, rather than the blades themselves. Uh, one motor operates one unit, which doesn't spread the cost of the gearbox out among many reels. So these are ideal for uh, small production water plants where you need maximum control of the speed and uh, all the mechanical components are above the water line. Moving on to vertical paddle wheel flocculators. Uh, here you can see the drive assembly with a chain coupling here uh, connecting it to the output shaft of the gearbox. Uh, we have a thrust collar which accept, takes up all axial loads heading into the gearbox and the radial thrust bearing here, taking up radial loads. This can significantly increase the lifespan of the gearbox, taking the load off of it. So with the paddle wheel flocculator, all the mechanical parts are above the water again. There's minimal wear items, easy access for maintenance, optimum process control with the speed adjustment and it fully complies with 10 state standards and has a low tip speed. So you get the maintenance benefits of a vertical style mixer, but with the performance and high quality flock creation of a paddle style mixer. Uh, the disadvantages 
are that one motor operates one flock reel, which drives up the cost a little bit. Uh, there's more wiring and drive supports than horizontal or walking beam flocculators, for example. So you might choose vertical paddle wheel flocculators for small production water plants. Uh, maximum process control is required to adjust the speed. Uh, if you have a desire for the components to stay above the water line for easy maintenance, and if the highest quality flock particle is desired. Horizontal paddle wheel flocculators. Um, you can see here uh, in this picture we have a wet chain design, and then there is a dry chain design here in a dry wheel, and then direct drive in a dry wheel straight through the wall through a stuffing box. Um, sprockets can be all stainless steel with UHM WPE teeth. Submerged bearings are typically stainless steel housings with uh, an HPVT composite bearing liner, which is a composite plastic material with uh, Teflon impregnations, significantly increasing the lifespan of those and also the solid shafting that runs through the bearings is typically 17.4 pH, which is very hard stainless steel grade and prevents any abrasion issues that could occur. So advantages of the horizontal paddle wheel flocculator are that this is the most economical flocculation system per MGD of water. One drive can operate 10 to 15 reels as needed. It fully complies with 10 state standards on the tip speed limit and the process performance with the paddle style flocculator you get the highest quality flock formation. Disadvantages are that the journal bearings require replacement and with if normal UHMWPE is used that can be 7 to 10 years but with the Teflon impregnated composite material it can be up to 15 to 20 year life on those bearing liners. With the horizontal you have less redundancy so if a drive fails then a large number of reels are out of commission. So you might choose horizontal flocculators when, when you have a large production water plant because and it has the most economical flocculation per volume of water ratio. Here we have the uh, walk and beam flocculator. Key features of this are the torque arm, converting rotational motion into linear motion here through a connecting rod, connecting rod bearing assembly, there's the riser beam and haunch, uh, the walking beam and haunch, and then the drop rods come down through here. Uh, this unit uh, has an up and down motion in the basin, so the speed is zero at the top of the stroke, speeds up and then it goes to zero at the bottom of the stroke. So all mechanical parts are above the water line for maintenance. There are minimal wear items, so no chain, stuffing boxes, or journal bearings to worry about. All the bearings are heavy duty roller bearings, which have a significantly long lifetime. Uh, with this up and down motion, you, the potential for mass rotation of water in the basin is not there. So that, that up and down motion is the ideal for flocculation in creating the highest quality flock particle. And these are fully compliant with 10 state standards. Tip speed stays under 3 feet per second. The drive location is, as you can see, the drive out here is on a pedestal and can be difficult if you're retrofitting an existing plant. But one drive can drive, as you can see, a whole line of these walking beam flocculators. You might want to choose walking beam flocculators when all rotating components need to be above the water. Uh, the optimum up-down motion prevents mass rotation and creates the highest quality flock particle possible. Ideal for basins with high depth to width ratios. So to recap, um, I've got each technology here listed by flock particle quality. 
with walking beam flocculators at the top, horizontal and vertical paddle wheels down here, and then the other flocculators down below in quality. As far as capital cost, the baffle wall flocculator is the lowest cost, while the horizontal and walking beam are next lowest. If you can amortize the drive cost over many reels. And then you have the vertical types down here that are okay for capital costs. As far as redundancy is concerned, the vertical units, well the, the baffle wall has no moving parts and will always function, so very reliable. Next in line would be the vertical units, who if one drive one goes out, there's usually several others that are still functioning. And then you have the walking beam and horizontal, which have just one drive. As far as maintenance, you got the baffle wall flocculator, very user friendly, low maintenance. The vertical units are easily accessible for maintenance, no problem there. Horizontal walking beam require just a little more maintenance activity. So, as far as finally adjusting your velocity gradient to give you the most flexibility possible. The vertical units are the selection there, any of those, because you can adjust the speed of one reel any way you choose. Uh, the horizontal and walking beam, you can adjust the speed of the drive, but it affects this is all very many reels, so you don't get quite the fine level of adjustment there. And for baffle wall flocculators, almost no adjustment is possible. As far as power usage, Baffle wall flocculator is supreme with no power usage at all, and the rest all have relatively the same usage of power to create a given gradient. And history of usage in water plants. Um, we've got the paddle wheel units, long history, many installations throughout the country. And then we have the impeller units are also good. Or, yeah, the impeller and the baffle wall, and hyperbolic has not that many installations in water plants throughout the country. And with that, I think I'll, that wraps it up pretty much. I'll take any questions if anybody has any.